A few months back, there was an unusual discovery coming out of James Webb Space Telescope in regards to this planet you see right here. This is a simulation of K218b, a very intriguing exoplanet that might be in the habitable zone of the star system it's in. A star system that we know contains another planet, but that one is much closer and thus much hotter. But the reason this particular planet was suddenly in the news and everybody was talking about it was because of this. The most recent observations of the atmospheric composition that revealed something really strange. First of all, a lot of methane. And as you might be aware, methane in theory could be a biosignature or essentially a sign of potential life. Now it doesn't have to be, but there is always a chance. There was also an abundance of CO2 or carbon dioxide and a complete lack of carbon monoxide, which is not so different from what we would find in the atmosphere of planet Earth. But much more interestingly was a potential detection of this, DMS or dimethyl sulfide, a toxic gas that here on planet Earth we know is only produced by life. It's not natural in any way and it's only produced by certain algae in the oceans and so basically if this was real, it was maybe a direct detection of life on another planet. You can obviously learn about all of this in one of the previous videos in the description. But here's the thing, and I guess it's a really big thing. All of this was super hypothetical, and obviously quite a lot of scientists kind of questioned the analysis here, with many additional papers coming out afterwards, and a lot of them discovered additional things we didn't know about before. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss these follow-ups in regards to K218b, talk about what's most likely happening here, and discuss some of the new studies that actually do present us with new options. But I guess first, let's briefly discuss some of the important details, including why methane is kind of interesting to begin with, and also what sort of a planet scientists believe this to be. And so, following these initial studies, one of the first propositions was that this was the first confirmed Hycean world. In essence, a very unusual planet containing an enormous ocean, an actually ocean containing liquid water, whose name is formed by two different words, hydrogen and ocean. Because in this case, not only does it have a very large ocean, and possibly just ocean, it also has a really thick hydrogen atmosphere. The atmosphere that would leave this planet with very hot temperatures and thus produce a kind of a supercritical water, or at least water that's just a little bit warmer than what we're used to. And so a lot of density data coming from this planet implied that K218b could be something between a super Earth and a sub Neptune, and thus sort of fit the description for a Hycean world. And since the average temperature of equilibrium is a little bit lower than what we have on Earth, the chances of this planet to have liquid water was somewhat high. And so these detections of methane were kind of super exciting, especially because methane generally does not actually last in the atmosphere for longer than two or three years. Normally because of the solar radiation, it completely falls apart, and so something definitely has to replenish it in some way. But the question is, is that something life? And here we have to be very careful. Here's actually one recent story coming from Mars with a video in the description talking about this a little bit more. For many years, scientists have been detecting unusual detections of methane that seem to be very periodic and happen during certain seasons on Mars. With a lot of scientists assuming that maybe this was sign of bacteria living here, releasing this methane when things got a little bit more comfortable. Something similar is actually even seen on objects like Titan orbiting Saturn. But a much more recent analysis directly established that this is indeed a geological process requiring no life. And it's really a result of a seasonal change that affects certain rocks that then suddenly release more methane. You can once again learn about this in that video. And so methane by itself can be produced in so many different inorganic ways. And so for terrestrial planets like Mars, serpentization is one of the biggest ones. It usually involves all kinds of rocks. And since methane has actually been found on all of the planets in the solar system and its existence has been explained without the use of any life, except for Earth of course, in this case detection of methane can also be obviously produced through natural means. And so this planet could also have some kind of an active source that we're just not familiar with. But then there was also CO2 and so together these two molecules could maybe serve as a sign of potential life. 
And actually, statistically speaking, methane could be biogenic for planets that are normally much older, terrestrial in nature, containing additional molecules such as CO2. But the question is, of course, could this planet be terrestrial? Right now, this wasn't really clear. And the other question was DMS, or that dimethyl sulfite. The 2023 detection was not really a detection as much as it was just a hint. As we've discussed in that previous video, here the detection value was extremely low and practically insignificant, and so the fact that the authors even mentioned it was maybe just for attention, to be honest. It didn't really make sense. And so most scientists kind of ignored DMS as even being in the atmosphere. It could actually have been something entirely different. Kind of similar to what happened with Venus and the phosphine detection, which turned out to be maybe not a detection. But anyway, a much more important study, and I guess a much more important detection, comes from something else from a few months ago in regards to a different planet. A planet that you see right here known as WASP-80b. Here, extremely recently, using very similar observations, methane was also discovered in pretty much the same amounts. And that's of course something that is expected. But this planet is a gas giant, as you can see right here. Yet it's orbiting a very similar type of a star as in K2-18b system with even very similar age. But intriguingly here, there was also a clear evidence of not just methane, but also once again water. Yet it's not a rocky planet, so methane cannot be explained with things like serpentinization, and water can probably not be explained with an ocean. Yet everything else about this planet, in terms of detections, was extremely similar to what we just saw on K218b. Okay, no DMS, no dimethyl sulfide, but definitely water, definitely methane. Which actually led to more discoveries about K218b as well. Now, just as a reminder, this is not an Earth-like planet. This is maybe a super-Earth, or maybe a mini-Neptune. It's about 8.6 masses of planet Earth, and it's also a little bit larger. But, unlike on the other planet, here the water was not visible in the atmosphere, it was just implied to exist on the surface. So I guess that's basically one of the main differences. But that's also the important part. A lot of this was kind of implied and suggested, none of this was definitive, and none of this explained everything all at once. And so the overall evidence for everything but carbon dioxide and methane was really weak. Yet the conclusion was that this planet was not just possibly habitable and potentially containing an ocean, but that it was also inhabited by something. Something producing CO2, methane and DMS. And that was honestly quite a big jump. Which is why a lot of scientists kind of decided to maybe see if they can disprove this or provide additional explanations. And there were quite a lot. A lot of things can explain everything we observe here, and none of them involve life or even a terrestrial planet. With one of the studies even providing evidence that you can actually explain all of this if this is a lava planet. Everything we observe could be produced by pure lava. But that's not the one I wanted to discuss. I wanted to discuss a much more interesting study, and actually a study by a NASA team that was able to produce extremely accurate simulations comparing several different scenarios with the direct observations from the James Webb. And in this case, their models predict the planet's photochemistry, or essentially various chemical reactions, that are usually driven by photons from the star itself. Something that is kind of visible in the data from the James Webb. And here, of all of the different scenarios, I guess two were maybe most exciting. In one of the scenarios, they imagined this to be a real high sea in the world with basically no life. And so in essence, you have that superheated ocean, or very hot ocean, and a lot of hydrogen in the atmosphere. And turns out that it's not a match. This is unlikely to be a lifeless water world. Mostly because it would not contain enough methane. Yet, interestingly, if you do add certain bacteria, such as these little guys, often known as acetotrophic methanotrophs, or basically bacteria producing methane and surviving through different chemical reactions, suddenly things looked a little bit better. It was not a 100% match, but it definitely looked slightly more accurate. Here's once again what it kind of looks like. But the best model was not this at all. The biggest match was a mini Neptune, or basically a planet containing no oceans, no terrestrial surface, and instead being an uninhabitable, gas-rich, Neptune-like planet that would have a very high methane concentration because of an upwards mixing of gases from inside the planet. Due to greenhouse gases, this would be way too hot for most life to survive. And by itself, 
it is a slightly, I guess, easier explanation. So here we have that Occam's razor, but also an explanation that does not require anything else in there because we know planets like this do exist. As a matter of fact, we know there is a lot of methane on both Uranus and Neptune, and they do provide somewhat similar observations. And so does that mean that no life? This is just another gas giant. Well, not necessarily. None of these models were super 100% accurate. There was still something missing in all of them. And so there's still maybe a chance that there could be life and this planet could be inhabited and that it could be a water world after all. That explanation is still not cancelled completely. And so more observations from the James Webb will be definitely required to confirm or disprove all of this, especially observations in different frequencies in order to really see what's going on in the atmosphere. But at the moment, it's really looking more and more like maybe this is not a water world, not even a high seeing planet, and maybe not even a planet containing anything super exciting. Maybe this is actually just a gas giant, just like so many other ones we've seen before. And all of this carbon dioxide, for example, can actually even just come from the moons or the comets, just like it does here in the solar system. And so maybe that's what we're seeing here as well. But obviously it's only been a few months and just one observation so far, so we'll probably know details and exact explanation about this planet in some of the future studies in months to come. And so maybe one day, hopefully in the next few years, we'll have our final conclusion about K218b. Is it really the first planet we've discovered with signs of life? Or was the data just completely misinterpreted and this is just another gas giant? We'll talk more about this in the future. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.